So, in the SN2 reaction, instead of having the leaving group fall off by itself, we essentially have the nucleophile push it off. So let's give an example of this. Let's say we have what we had before, 2-bromopentane. In this case, let's have one enantiomer in which we have the bromide coming out of the paper, symbolized by this wedge. And let's have the same nucleophile we had before, OH-. Now, what can happen? Well, let's assume that we can have this hydroxide attack from both sides. But we see a problem with that. Because of the bromine is coming out of the paper, the hydroxide has a big difficulty in attacking from the front side. Because this bromide here is negatively charged, partially negatively charged, essentially blocking this also negative charge from attacking from the front side. Instead, the hydroxide would much rather prefer to attack from the opposite side of the bromide, from the back side. So the intermediate product you form is this in which you have a b partial bond between both the bromine and the hydroxide. So excuse my notation, but uh, this here represents a partial bond coming out of the paper, and this represents a partial bond going into the paper. Now the final step in this reaction is, this, is which we have the electrons from the carbon-bromide bond go towards completely the bromide, and we have the valence electrons from the hydroxide help form a bond between the carbon and oxygen, like so. So the final product we get is this. And this is the only product we get because we cannot have it attack from the front side as stated previously. Now why can't we have SN2 reactions happen out of tertiary carbon? So let's try to see what happens with, with that. So let's have the same tertiary carbon we had before here. So let's draw this in 3D so we can focus on this carbon here and see why we cannot have an SN2 reaction happen. So let's draw it in 3D. So we have the bromine coming to the right. Then we have this. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Then we have the ethyl group here. And then we have the methyl group. So, as stated previously, in an SN2 reaction, we have to have the nucleophile, in our case hydroxide, attack from the opposite side. So what's the problem with this if we have a hydroxide trying to attack from this side? Well, because of these carbons here in a tertiary uh, carbon, it's hard for this hydroxide to attack from the right angle and right speed to exactly only hit this carbon. Instead, more likely, this hydroxide would instead want to attack this carbon, or this carbon, or this carbon, or this carbon, and so on. Therefore, it would not want to form this product. Now, that's why SN2 reactions only happen on secondary and primary carbons, because it's much more easy for the hydroxide to attack. So let's draw uh, this compound here in 3D. So let's do the same thing, which we have the bromide coming off to the right. We have a... Uh, the propyl group coming up out of us, out of the paper, and the methyl group coming into the paper. And then we have a hydrogen here. Now this is important. Unlike this one, we have hydrogen instead of carbon. And because hydrogen is much more smaller than carbon, this hydrogen blocks to a much less extent than this carbon does. Therefore, this hydroxide can much more easily attack from here. Unlike in this case where this carbon would be essentially blocking it. So in summary, we can have SN1 reactions happening if the leaving group is on a tertiary carbon, and we have SN2 reactions happening if the leaving group is on either a secondary or a primary carbon.